I was there all those years ago. When the last of the factories were shut down. searched and searched for a camera to fill the void that film left behind and came across something that I did not expect. The Epson RD1 was unlike any other digital camera. Originally released in 2004, it was the first ever mirrorless digital camera and it would herald the new era of digital photography. The RD1 was an APS-C M-mount digital rangefinder. This camera was manufactured within the liminal space between digital and analog photography. And as a result, it inherited DNA from both worlds that made it incredibly unique in the post-analog era. It's harder to get any closer to a film-like shooting experience with a digital camera. Due to it being such an old digital camera, it only has a 6 megapixel CCD sensor. At first, this number sounded pretty unreasonable. However, 6 megapixels is actually a resolution of 3000 by 2000, which was higher resolution than most computer displays even in the early 20s. It was also the same sensor used in the Nikon D100. It only supports up to 2 gigabyte SD cards, so you'll need to hunt these down. It further lends itself to the film-like experience where you really can't take infinite shots like you would on a typical digital camera. The images that the sensor produces are really amazing given its age. Epson did an extremely good job with their color pipeline, and you can get some really nice colors out of this sensor. Obviously a sensor this old would have lower dynamic range, but if you keep this in mind while shooting, it's really not an issue. As you would expect, the ISO performance is equally mediocre. However, it's completely usable if you know what you're doing. Most of the shots in this broadcast were at 800 ISO, and the camera's max is 1600. I rarely shot over 800 when I was using film in the past, so this wasn't really an issue for me. Just treat it like a film camera, and it's totally fine. If you want your images to have a similar feeling as mine, head over to gxace.com and pick up my new Lightroom preset pack, Atrophy. most striking element of this camera is the analog gauge on top. It displays important information about the status of the camera in such a unique way. The outside of the ring displays the shots remaining. The bottom shows the battery life as a fuel gauge. 
the left side shows the white balance and the right shows the JPEG quality settings. The gauge itself was designed by Epson's parent company, Seiko which specializes in making some of the world's most beloved watches. This viewfinder is one of the best I've ever used in a rangefinder. It's extremely large and bright and puts my Leica M6 finder to shame. The best feature of it is that it's one-to-one -one and does not magnify, so you can keep both eyes open while framing and be more aware of your surroundings. The screen is probably one of the first examples of a rotating vlog-style flip LCD. It will rotate all the way to fold back with the screen hidden. I do love the option of having the screen close completely. If there was one thing I wish this camera had, was the flip screen from the Fuji X-Pro3. That screen to me is the perfect balance between a film-like shooting experience and a digital camera. This screen, it's easy for me to just leave it folded to the digital side because of how convenient the screen is to flip open and close. I actually like that the screen is inconvenient on the Fuji X-Pro3 because it makes me use it the way it was intended, closed. Sometimes a limitation is better. That being said, the LCD on the RD1 is pretty useless given its age and really can only be used to judge framing. The experience of using this camera is what makes it so unique. Since this is essentially a digital sensor in a film body, it shoots exactly like a film camera. It will electronically fire the shutter, but you actually have to use the film advance lever on top to mechanically reset the shutter before it will allow you to take another shot. Not only that, but the menus are navigated using what would be the film rewind lever on a normal film camera. The simple process of shooting and advancing the shutter makes this digital camera feel so much more like a film camera than any I've ever used. I often talk about tactility and its role in making cameras more fun. This is the epitome of that in a digital camera. It's so extremely satisfying shooting then cocking the shutter and taking another shot, especially without the cost of developing weighing on your mind as you wind that lever. It's been ages since film was being made, and I miss the slow, methodical, tactile feeling of shooting a film camera. Any film you can find now is widely expensive, and while the Epson is expensive as well, it's far more affordable than shooting film and gives you the same experience. I will always choose a camera that is more fun to use than one that's technically superior. You can make a good image with any camera, so why not make the process of doing so as enjoyable as possible? cual estado del mundo ha hecho la vida difícil tanto para el ser humano, 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 como para las máquinas. Como todos sabéis, después de la crisis mundial de suministros de che, 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 a principios de los años 20, 20, la humanidad se enfrenta a uno de sus mayores retos. GX necesita tu apoyo para continuar haciendo estos vídeos. Con este apoyo a través de Patreon, GAX podrá mantenerse al margen del sistema corporativo y podrá dedicarle más tiempo a crear el contenido que todos queréis. Los pay patrons tendrán acceso a contenido exclusivo detrás de las cámaras, grabaciones en vivo, un servidor oculto, desescort, tu nombre en los créditos de cada episodio, fotos cada trimestre y acceso a todos los live un preset packs de GAs. Gracias y manteneros a salvo.